Hey guys, welcome back to another Let's Build Minecraft episode. So today we are going to take a look at how to build my villager breeder. Uh, so this is a redstone contraption. So uh, if you're not familiar with redstone, I will cover some of the basics. Um, but this is the basics of how it works. Uh, essentially, there is a farm on top and there is a holding pen at the bottom. You put two villagers in here and a farmer up top and they will feed these two guys in here. And as you can see, the water will uh, push any babies that spawn off into this little section right here. Let me just break. Uh, we'll break this one. And then they fall down in here and then water will carry them all the way out. So yeah, so uh, this is the uh, the design. Uh, there is a bunch of redstone down at the bottom, but before we begin, I just want to cover a couple of real quick things. Oh, here we go. And uh, yeah, this should uh, should be a, a quick and easy uh, tutorial. All right, so first of all, I just want to talk about the farm that we'll be putting on top. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with farms, uh, farms require or rather prefer to have uh, water in the middle, you can hydrate an area this size, which is uh, 10 by 10 with a single water source block. So basically you have uh, water in the middle, four going this way, four going this way, four going this way, and four going this way, and the entire area will be hydrated. So the configuration that we are going to use is pretty similar to this, where there's a hole in the middle and you'll need four water blocks around the outside. Now you could go a little bit bigger, but this may have an impact on efficiency. Um, so that is up to you and then you can always modify this. But we're gonna take this and we're gonna add an extra couple of blocks to our design. So essentially we are gonna have right here, uh, it's gonna be five blocks wide going across uh, each one of the sides. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's talk about the redstone. All right, so the redstone is gonna be broken up into a couple of different components. And the first one we're gonna talk about is this right here. This is the Etho hopper clock. Uh, I have it set up on both sides. So both sides will uh, put out a redstone signal and an output. Um, Effectively, this is a very simple design. It's just two hoppers facing into each other and uh, comparators going out and sticky pistons with redstone blocks. Now, here's a modification that Azumavoid made to it so that you can stack them next to each other. And I really like this design because it's only one wide. Um, it's basically the same thing. The only difference is it requires some redstone torches. Next up, we have a very simple pulse extender. This is just two comparators facing in the op in opposite directions, and this will go ahead and extend a pulse. And then over here, we have a little bit of a larger pulse extender, which uh, just solid blocks with redstone dust all along the top and comparators facing in opposite directions. So these four uh, redstone items, these four contraptions, we will be using in today's design. So just make sure you have the uh, components necessary before you get started. All right, so here's a, uh, a side view of the uh, the guts of the inside, all the redstone workings. So before you get started, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have an area that is 13 wide, 13 deep, 11 tall in total, and six of those, including the uh, including this level, the uh, spawning level, will be underground. So it's actually five below. Um, so yeah, go ahead and find an area for that, and then we can actually go ahead and get started. All right, so hopefully you've picked out a spot, but before we get started, here is a look at the materials you are going to need. So you will need quite a few blocks, uh, glass, half slabs, some kind of uh, block. Uh, I just picked uh, stone bricks. You're gonna need, in addition to a water bucket, you'll need an additional four source blocks. So you're gonna need to put the water down four times to feed the farm. And then uh, just some different redstone bits, uh, hoppers, droppers, dispensers, repeaters, comparators, redstone, and redstone torches. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is place down our uh, dispenser, but before we do that, we just need to get the area ready. So uh, we're gonna start right here, and we're gonna dig this block out, <coughs> remove this block, and go down one more. So we'll go ahead and replace this one right here with a uh, wool block because I like to use wool and then we're going to place a redstone torch directly on top then in this hole that we have left we'll just go down and target the torch and place our dispenser 
So next up, we're gonna clear out this area and replace it with these blocks. I'm gonna do it just like this. And there, go down to replace that. Here, there. And there, okay. So you should have something that looks something like this. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove these blocks right here all the way around to create a nice little channel. And you can go down one more block. Okay. So now if you are following along, you should have something that looks just like this. All right, so I went ahead and replaced the uh, the bottom here with wool just so it's uh, nice and clearly marked. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this is the direction we want our villagers to go in. So I'm just gonna remove some blocks right here and uh, that should be fine right about there. Okay, so next up, we're gonna dig this block right here down one extra space, and we're gonna go ahead and dig this out as well. So I'll go ahead and replace this with blue wool just so we, uh, we know exactly where our water channel is. The last thing we're gonna wanna do is break this accidentally and have it uh, flood our redstone underneath. So with any luck, you're following along and you have something that looks kind of like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and all along these edges, I'm going to fill this in with stone brick um, just so that it is easily identifiable. All right, so now that we have all this filled in and looking all nice, I'm going to go ahead and place a water bucket or a water source block right back here, which will flow all the way around and stop just short of this location. So then we can add another water source block right here and this will go ahead and carry our villagers off to uh, wherever we want. So this is the uh, basic design for the entire uh, breeding level. Um, so from here, you can definitely wall this in with glass. I would highly suggest that you do. And this will keep both the baby villagers from escaping and mobs from getting inside. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and mark out the four corners. So starting at the middle, you're gonna come out four spots. So that's one, two, three, four. From here, using the dispenser as our center point, we're gonna then go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is gonna be corner number one. Keeping in line with this same one, we're gonna go back to the middle and we're gonna count off eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. Next, we're gonna start right about here. Uh, yeah, we'll go this way first. We wanna go eight, but we wanna stay in line with this. So right here, and then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And then we're gonna just connect this, uh, this cross section up right here. So we'll go to here, there. All right, so now once you have your four dots, it should be roughly like this. Uh, the majority of this is gonna be cleared out underneath for redstone. All right, so if you are playing this on a survival world, I would strongly recommend that you get ladders and trap doors. That's not required for this build, but uh, blocking off these holes will give you easy in and out, and it will also prevent mobs from spawning. So now that we have this dug, we're gonna go ahead and dig one, two, three, four, five blocks down, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, remove this uh, this whole kind of area in here. Now, uh, if you want to, you can definitely switch out this floor uh, for something else. I will be doing that here in just a moment, but uh, yeah, let me get this whole section kind of dug out, and uh, we'll pick back up from there. All right, so now that we have the whole area dug out, we're gonna go ahead and start work on the redstone. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and take this block right here, which has the redstone torch on it and the dispenser above it. And we're gonna go two blocks down, we'll remove this block and in its place, we are gonna place a redstone torch. So now coming off of this block on this side, on the shorter side, we'll go ahead and put a uh, block right here and a redstone repeater directly on top. So now over here, this is where our uh, vertical hopper timer is gonna go. And we'll just go ahead and place these two hoppers so that they are in fact facing into each other. Then coming off of these two, we are gonna go ahead and place two comparators followed up with 
to solid blocks leading out. And then on the back of those solid blocks, we'll go ahead and place a redstone torch on each side, followed with a solid block on top of the torches, just like this, and a torch right here on the inside. So now if you point your cursor right at the torches, you'll be able to place two sticky pistons just like this, and a redstone block will go in there, but we'll go ahead and save that for later. Now additionally, coming off of the back one, directly in line with our little torch tower we built there, we're gonna go ahead and place a single solid block with a redstone torch on its face. So you should have something that looks a little bit like this, If you need to pause the video, please feel free to do so. All right, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and remove a few blocks. So we're gonna start off by removing this block that we put here. We're gonna go ahead and remove these four, one, two, three, and four. This will come in handy in just a little while. So we'll go ahead and loop around over here and we're gonna put down three redstone dusts followed with a repeater, one additional dust, and then another repeater facing into it. And this is going to be where we place our first uh, large pulse extender. So we'll go ahead and place a uh, block right there with a comparator running into it, followed up by another block with yet another comparator running into it, another block, another comparator, another block, and our last comparator, Yes, this is our final one. So you should have four comparators going across the bottom, just like this. So then on top of each of these blocks, we're gonna go ahead and place a solid block, just like this. And then in the gaps left behind, we're gonna go ahead and put comparators facing the opposite direction. Two, three. And then right on top, we're gonna go ahead and put redstone dust on all of the exposed uh, blocks, like so. And last one right here. All right, now coming off of this, we're gonna go ahead and put a uh, single redstone repeater running out from here. Then we're gonna put a redstone repeater running in. Okay, so then right off of this redstone repeater, we're gonna put six dusts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. Next up, we'll go ahead and grab yet another repeater and have it come off of this block right here, leading into our little trough that we just built. And we'll go ahead and put dust into the trough, two, three, four, and out. So at this point, you should have something that resembles this. All right, so time for a little bit of the timing circuits. So coming around here, we've got our redstone repeater that's facing into the pulse extender. We're just gonna drop two dust and we're gonna have a redstone comparator going out, a redstone comparator coming in with two dust on the back to complete that circuit. Then coming right over here, we need to have a solid block with a redstone torch on its face facing in and behind it, a comparator facing into that block. Then over here directly behind that comparator will go a uh, dropper with a hopper facing into it and coming here directly adjacent will be a redstone torch. All right, so we need to go ahead and put our uh, next timing piece in. So directly adjacent to our dropper, we'll go ahead and put a single uh, solid block redstone on top and come down just like this. So this is gonna go ahead and be powering, or this will be powered by the uh, the next uh, uh, timer that we're gonna put in. So these two locations here are where the redstone is gonna go back and forth. So we'll go ahead and put a sticky piston right there and a sticky piston right there with uh, redstone dust directly behind them on each of them. So dust there and dust there. Solid block will go right here, another solid block right here, and then we'll have a comparator facing out, another comparator facing out, and we'll go ahead and put down our two hoppers just like this. So now this is gonna be the back and forth for our, uh, we'll call it the second timer. So uh, redstone, or I'm sorry, hoppers function at a rate of point an item will transfer every 0.7 seconds. That's what I'm trying to say. So 85 items in here will cause this to uh, tick back and forth. The redstone block that we're gonna put in will flick back and forth once about every minute. So with 85 items in here and we'll say 19 items in there, this, uh, this should pulse 
once every 19 minutes or so, depending on if you're doing it on a single player world or on a server based on uh, game lag. So then the only other item we have to do is right here, we're going to go ahead and put a redstone repeater facing into this hopper, which will then freeze the second hand when everything else fires. So let's go ahead and get uh, the last couple of pieces in place. All right, so for the last item that we're going to do, we need to go ahead and put, first of all, we need to put our redstone blocks in, and that will go ahead and uh, allow our timers to go back and forth. And then we're going to, in here, put 85 items. So that is a stack of 64 plus 21. And then over here for our minute hand, we will, in the dropper, put 19 items. Now, uh, on your gameplay, your results may vary, but I've figured that about 10 items in this uh, hopper over here will be enough to allow for the water to flow evenly and still give you enough time to uh, have everything turn off. So we'll just go ahead and put uh, 10 items in there and that will be just about enough. Now the only other thing I would recommend is putting a lever of some sort on here so you do have a little bit of control on whether or not this is running. Uh, it may prevent uh, server lag if you are on a server. So yeah, just by flicking this lever, this uh, the second piston or the second uh, uh, contraption, as we'll call it, the uh, the second timer will stop, and it won't let this uh, hopper flow or this uh, dispenser drop any more items into the hopper, and it will essentially freeze up the bottom. Now you can build this entire creation without the uh, the redstone component, and you should have uh, reasonable success. So let's go ahead and get on to the superstructure. All right, so we're back up on top. So the first thing you're definitely going to want to do is protect the uh, the villagers. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and put glass in right here, and then we'll go ahead and surround this entire area. Uh, this will prevent both mobs from attacking, and it will prevent the baby villagers from accidentally falling out. So this is uh, this glass wall here. I'm using glass because uh, I like to see what's going on inside. You can use solid blocks. You don't really need to see it. Uh, I would suggest, though, putting some kind of uh, light source inside so that way just in the event that uh you know anything might spawn in there but uh i mean the only place it really has to spawn are right here on these little platforms so now that we've got this in place we're going to go ahead and put our dirt in um, if you come up two blocks directly above this uh, dispenser this is where the uh, the hole is going to be so you're going to want to come up like this and then around the edges you're going to put just a row of uh uh, blocks just like this and then this will prevent the uh, villager who is on top from being able to fall inside once we have everything completed but you're also going to need to prevent these villagers from getting out so in addition to this you are going to need to all the way around on the four corners put half slabs down so that your spawning villagers the villagers that will actually be doing the breeding can't escape through this uh, one and a half block height All right, now that you have this all done up, we're going to go ahead and go out in each direction for four blocks of dirt. This will go ahead and be our part of our farm area. So if you go out one, two, three, four, and do that in all four directions, we'll be able to uh, continue the pattern from there. All right, so at this point, you should have something resembling this. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and fill in all of these, uh, these gaps right here, just like so, and this will give you all of your farming area just like this we'll go ahead and fill all of this stuff in and uh, then we can go ahead and move on to watering all right so now that you have this uh, this star pattern design I'm going to say that this is the smallest area that you should probably do but if you would like you can definitely go ahead and expand this so right here this is actually going to be where the water goes but we're going to go ahead and increase this two on each side just like this to give us just a little bit of extra farm room for our farming villager to have uh, the ability to grow crops in. All right, so now that we've got all that done, the next step you're, you're gonna wanna take is to replace this block here with a water source block. In order to do that, you do need to block in the uh, the area here. So we'll just go ahead and use this, uh, this smooth andesite because, uh, well, I like the way it looks. 
and it will do the job just nicely. So just like that, you're gonna to wanna to recreate this basic pattern all the way around. I went ahead and uh, just decided that I'm gonna do something kinda of like this all the way around, uh, just for aesthetics. Uh, it looks nice and it gives you a nice place to put the glass if you decide to use glass for your, uh, for your uh, filager breeder. You can do it just like this. All right, once again, this is mostly just for looks, but now that you have a, uh, a location to put your water in, go ahead and drop it down, and then you can go ahead and farm your entire uh, field here to get it ready for the crops. So I have been using potatoes for all of my farms. Um, you could probably also use carrots um, or beets, I suppose. I don't really know how villagers interact with beets, but potatoes definitely seem to be the way to go. So once you have this all done, if you have a good supply of potatoes, I would recommend that you go ahead and plant the field with potatoes just to make it ready for when your villager comes along. And uh, if you have a problem getting a farmer, then you can always harvest the potatoes and create a small stockpile. So once we have all the farmland filled in, we're just gonna go ahead and fill in all the way around with glass. This will give us a nice uh, viewing area for our villager and it'll give us a nice safety ring to prevent any mobs from getting in. Um, lighting will be a concern, so you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you, but uh, torches are fine. You can put them on top, uh, depending on how you want to make your final design look, you can definitely use torches as the, uh, the lighting solution. So let's go ahead and fill all this glass in and I'll be back with you in a moment. All right, so at this point you have something that looks like this. So the only other thing we need to do is make it so that the uh, the farmer villager, once you get him inside, can't actually fall into the hole and uh, not far not harvest uh, any more crops. So if you go ahead and block the hole and you just go up like this, you can go ahead and put a half slab directly on top, and this will be just enough height to keep him from falling in. And then you can definitely put some uh, some glowstone or sea lanterns, or you can uh, do this whole thing up with uh, bottom-sided half slabs or entire half slabs, really whatever's gonna fit in with your uh, design in your world. All right, for the very last item, you are gonna need to put a detection villager in here. So uh, if you were to look down below, you can see right here, we do have a nice three wide space. So what we're gonna do here is find our center section, which is right here. And we'll just go ahead and fill in a couple of blocks to keep him from being able to escape. And we'll just go ahead and fill it all the way up to the ceiling. Now, you could definitely use uh, glass or whatever kind of block that you uh, find uh, desirable. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this uh, polished andesite because like I said before, I like the way it looks. All right, so we've created a little uh, a little room here. And uh, again, it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, all this tall, but I figure why not? And there we go. All right, perfect. So now coming from here, we wanna go seven blocks down from this level. So we're gonna say that this is a one, two, this one will be three, four, five, six, and seven. So right about here, this will be our floor level, and we just wanna go ahead and dig this out just a little bit, two blocks back, and just like this. So now we're gonna fill in doors all along here. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of door, I'll go ahead and use just regular old oak doors. Uh, they are easy to get, and I'm sure you have uh, quite a bit of oak just kind of laying around. So now down here, you do need to place a villager in this little section, and this will be your detection villager. This will detect the fact that there are six doors, and that breeding is something that should happen. Now, on your way out, you're going to want to cover these three blocks with glass. So as long as you have these three blocks covered, light from the sky can in fact get down to these uh, these doors. Zombies and other mobs won't be able to get down there and interfere with your villager. And uh, that is it. That's the whole design. So once you get this uh, crop planted, you get your farmer in place, you get your detection villager down there, and you get your two breeding villagers in this hole, you very shortly will have a very successful villager breeder. Um, the one thing that this breeder has that uh, other kind of uh, villager breeders don't is generally speaking, 
in my experience, and I've done a fair amount of testing on this, you don't have extra adults growing up in the breeding area. So this will almost always allow for baby villagers to walk off by themselves. And if they don't walk off in the allotted time, the dispenser will dispense water and it will push them into the water channel and allow them to be carried away. Um, so that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.